Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for February 8th, 2022. Well, yesterday we had kind of a, well, just a go nowhere day. It was very lethargic. Um, and actually, when you take a look at the um, volume of the day, it was actually um, relatively anemic on the day. We just couldn't get any momentum to go either direction and ended up closing the day basically flat. And interestingly enough, the overnight price action in the futures has been relatively flat. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we just settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Hey, this morning there will not be a blog post. Um, I had it all written out and went to post it, had a little computer snafu and ended up um, clearing the whole thing. So no blog post today, but um, let's take a look at these charts and see if we can get some information about how we might want to approach the market. First off, the Dow getting a little bit of price rest in here. I got to tell you, I, I kind of appreciate that. Um, we need the market to spill off some of this volatility and relax a little bit instead of these 500 point moves every day. Um, unfortunately, we're doing that at a place where we're still in a downtrend here in the chart. So notice we have this downtrend. We have this little uptrend that we're trying to decide, can we, can the bulls push it on through to the upside? Um, and we have a substantial price resistance level in the chart that we need to try and break through. And it's just, um, well, it's kind of a difficult situation here in the market with the 50 um, and the, the um, technical indicators, so the 50, the 34, the 20 EMA crossing down, creating quite a level of price resistance in the chart, as you can see. So whether or not we can get moving, and, and I think the market seems to be waiting on something. I'm not sure if we're worried about um, rising rates. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but our bonds, our bond yields continue to move um, a much higher. Um, if we take a look at TNX, this is the 10-year treasury. Um, and they're moving up again this morning, um, approaching 2% on the 10 year, which could signal some more volatility or some more uncertainty in the market and particularly in that tech sector. And then uh, TYX, this is the 30 year bond. It is also moving up here this morning. So we'll wanna keep an eye on that with that 10 year running kind of hot, uh, pushing up toward that 2% um, around that 30 year, you know, we could actually have that yield inversion start to, to occur and that could create some problems in the market. We also have, um, you know, of course, the, the potential of the Russian invasion going on. We've got inflationary numbers coming up this week. So I'm not exactly sure what's creating this hesitation in the market, but there certainly is a bit of that hesitation. Now, when we take a look at the SPY, we've got very much the same situation. And if you take a look at the technicals in that chart and notice that we are holding above that 200 day as the Dow is holding above that 200 day, but we're not getting a whole lot of confidence here in this move. Notice we've got tremendous resistance in the chart um, to try and deal with uh, to the upside and if we look across here we're still in a, a official downtrend on this move with all of that resistance above to try and deal with and although we are trying to hang in here on this little upside move we're not showing a whole lot of confidence in it so watch that closely and if this were to fail through this area we'd look for some price support maybe in here and if that doesn't hold, well, then I would suggest a retest of the lows. So you might want to keep an eye on that possibility. Let's take a look at the QQQ. Now, QQQ 
is in a rather precarious position, honestly, in the fact that we are still underneath the 200 day moving average. We tried to get up there, we were not able to hold that. And notice we've got a little teeny tiny bit of price support right through there in that chart. But oh my goodness, we've got layer after layer of price resistance above in the NASDAQ. And with these bonds moving up the way they are, um, that could create some well, some complications here for that tech sector. And then we have some other issues out there creating some additional uh, problems in, um, in the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at Facebook here. Facebook continued to sell off yesterday, going lower on the chart. And there's news out this morning that they may um, shut down Facebook in Europe because of some demand of the country for data sharing. Um, that um, obviously um, could have more downside ramifications here for Facebook. So keep an eye on that. But let's, um, if we take a look at our patterns here in the chart, notice we have this downtrend in play. And if we sell off a little bit more, we've got a little bit of price support in here with lots of resistance above. Um, there's quite a, I mean, a lot of layers of resistance up here in that chart that I'm not sure we're going to get um, those earnings reports at this point in time to really inspire um, a big upside move to break those resistance levels. So we'll have to watch that pretty closely. If this begins to soften and weaken, it really could start to drag the rest of the market lower. And then if we take a look at our um, Russell, that poor Russell, um, it was one of the strongest of the day yesterday. Um, it, it, but it is also one of the most oversold um, indexes in the market. And as you can see, we are still running in downtrends um, with a massive price resistance level above. And unfortunately, very, very little support below. So if this were to start to break that level, we could really fall hard here in IWM. So keep a close eye on that. And our technicals in this chart, certainly not uh, what you'd want to see um, in a bullish chart, obviously, um, getting worse and worse um, as we continue to linger in this area. Now, the one good thing about us resting in here is once again, is that we are spilling off some of that volatility. So if we could continue to rest, we could actually build a platform from where we can move from. So if we were to build a platform that would give us a lot easier access to um, an, an upside opportunity or that potential downside opportunity in the chart. So a little bit of rest would be good. Not sure we're going to get that. So keep a close eye. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now the VIX softened just a little tiny bit yesterday, which again, that's just showing that little bit of calmness in the market where we didn't really go anywhere. But let's keep in mind, we're still holding on to that 20 handle here in the VIX and we're still holding on to that upside trend here in that VIX. So you'll want to keep a pretty close eye on this. If this picks up, any reason for bearishness, then we may start to um, really spike higher if that selling comes in. So watch that closely. If you are a bull in the market, we certainly want to see that continue to soften and weaken um, in the chart. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now T2122 is the four week new high, new low ratio. And I have to tell you guys, I do have a lot of confidence in the this indicator. If you guys have been paying attention over the weeks and months that I've been um, talking about this, you guys have seen that when we spike up here into these upper areas, we have um, high probabilities of pullbacks in the market. And it just works over and over again. And you can see that we have uh, been down here in that bullish reversal zone, holding on down here. And we've picked up from that level. But yesterday, kind of an interesting thing. We just kind of seesawed back and forth in here on T2122. But the good news is, is we had more advancers than we did decliners and that pushed us up slightly here. So we're right here in the middle of the road. Now, 
when we're in the middle of the road of T2122, it really doesn't tell us anything. It tells us if we get the opportunity um, to for some bullish price action in here, then we have still have plenty of upside opportunity in here, but we have about an equal weight uh, for the downside opportunity if those bears get engaged. So it's really gonna come down to the economic reports and those earnings reports. Will there be enough positive in the earnings reports to push us up or will that kind of lean over to the bearish side? And I do think we're gonna need a pretty substantial group of bullish reports to kind of overcome the fears that are cropping up on the um, rising bonds. So keep a close eye on that. And then our T2108, we had an improvement in T2108 yesterday, but you know, uh, we went from 25% to 28% of the stocks above the 40 day moving average. Not exactly a stellar performance on the day, but it was an improvement. So I guess we can uh, we can be happy about that, uh, uh, particularly if you're a bull um, looking in there, but we've still got lots of resistance levels above and obviously still in a downtrend. So no particular uh, warm and fuzzy came into the market here for those bulls yesterday. And then T2107, um, virtually the same thing. Um, little teeny tiny improvement on the day and this was a very small improvement on the day and as you can see 29 percent of the stocks holding above their 200 day moving average and obviously lots of price resistance above in this chart and um, downtrend continues um, in t2107 t2101 our absolute market breadth T2101, as you can see, did pull back yesterday, which is another sign that there was that bullishness in the market. We had more advancers than decliners. And notice that we are still holding on to some price support levels in the chart. So we'll wanna keep an eye on this, that big old downtrend in here, we're still holding above that. So we still run that risk if we get some real bearishness to start pushing in here to the upside. So let's um, let's just watch this closely. And then let's take a look at our economic calendar uh, for today. One thing I wanna point out though this morning, there's an article, and this is gonna be kind of interesting coming up. There's an article on CNBC today. You might wanna take a look at this. Um, the Bank of England, the, the chief of the Bank of England, asks, asks Brits to um, de not demand pay raises. Now, why would a bank, um, why would a central bank ask for people not to demand pay raises? Well, one of the reasons here is there is a fear, and I know our Fed is talking about the same thing. There was uh, clues to that in some of the comments. One of their fears is that we go into what uh, some would describe as kind of a doom cycle. And that is where we already have um, high inflation in the market, okay? So that inflation is already up there. And what that's doing is it's creating a lot of pressure on businesses to do what? It's causing them to potentially raise the rates or raise salaries. Well, when salaries raise and prices are already expensive, that creates more demand. And what happens? Inflation continues to rise. So it's a, it's a cycle um, that I think all of the um, all of the central banks are worried about. That if businesses really start to ramp up uh, those pay um, those salaries. Um, that will put more and more pressure on that inflationary cycle. And, um, you know, the, the Central Bank of England was just just brave enough to come out and, or, um, and say that, and he got chastised pretty hard for that. But an interesting, interesting thing. And um, if we start to see that cycle, we certainly could see those inflationary numbers continue to rise. And uh, again, that doom cycle could um, really kick over. And honestly, guys, that's where you start to see um, hyperinflation uh, come into the mix. So hopefully that's not the case here in the United States. Let's take a look at that economic calendar for today. We're going to get um, information here on international trade and goods this morning. That's really about the only thing that's going to make a whole lot of difference here 
Notice we do have a three-year bond to auction or note auction, but I don't know that that's going to be a big issue. But keep an eye on uh, this number here. Um, we've had some pretty bad numbers here um, on this um, and notice that what the consensus is expecting is it's going to go higher, um, a negative 83 billion. So we're running into some problems here where we're actually not doing so well with our international trade. And um, remarkably, the number uh, last year, um, the market was able to ignore that number and just didn't really care. Um, where I think they really should be starting to care about that number. Um, if we're not making anything here in the United States and shipping it out, and we're just only bringing things in, um, that can, we're really um, running that uh, potential that we are importing deflation. So um, keep a close eye on that number. That could be critical for today. Let's take a look at, um, some of our earnings calendar now unfortunately guys on our earnings calendar today um, I was not able to complete the blog so um, I'm not going to have my full list there so I'll cover quite a few of these stocks here this morning if you saw that headline across that CNBC uh, ticker up there uh, Peloton um, Peloton uh, moving lower here this morning um, they've got their earnings report out there um, the CEO stepping down um, so you might want to keep an eye on that um, we're going to have reports from BP today um, one of the hottest sectors in um, in the uh, market is the energy sector and um, as a matter of fact of the spider select sectors um, XLE XLE and XOP are the only two spider select sectors holding a 20-day trend um, um, everything else is um, a lower um, they are improving but they are not holding into any kind of trend so it's the energy sector that is really really strong here in the market and we'll want to keep an eye on that because as we continue to press energy higher and higher that's another one of those factors that just pushes that inflation up and up and up in the market take a look at cmg cmg will be reporting today we're going to hear from armk we're going to get news from CEIX. Um, COTY will be reporting today. APBS is on the list for today. Um, we've got DD on that list. We're going to hear from FISV. GFS is on the list. Harley Davidson, whoops. Harley Davidson is going to report. We've got Jacobs Engineering on there. We've got um, KKR will be reporting. Um, we've got Lear. Yeah, oops, LEA. Um, we've got Lear. Um, Masco is reporting. Save. Save Airlines will be reporting. We've got SYY. VVV. Let's see, um, I wrote a whole bunch down here, WTW, and there's more than this, I just don't have time to cover them all this morning, and I apologize for the problem with the, with the blog, so stay on your toes watching these um, will be very, very important. So quite a few earnings reports, but as you noticed as I went through that list of earnings reports, not exactly the big market moving type stocks. And that's where we're running into that little bit of problem here in the market. So with that, guys, how about we take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, if you could do me a quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up. So you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful and helpful, if you could please do me that favor, 
favor and click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment. And I know, um, hey, doing that is kind of a pain in the neck, doing it over and over and over, but it does help a lot in continuing to grow the channel. And I just want to say thanks to everyone who does do that. I truly, truly appreciate it and supports the content here on the channel. It makes a world of difference. And thank you everyone who does. Also, um, if you feel free, uh, feel free to share this video out there on your social feed. That also helps the channel to continue to grow. So thank you for everyone who does that. We're going to see some changes to the channel here soon. I'm going to start doing um, here in the very near future, start doing some live education and things out there on YouTube. So keep an eye out for some of those notifications. And by the way, guys, if you you want to um, join me today at um, 8 p.m. Eastern tonight I will be doing a public um, education center or, or class we're going to be talking a lot about bringing some balance to your trading when the markets like this and talking a lot about price action um, in the charts so if you're available 8 p.m. Eastern tonight tonight just go to the hit and run candlesticks um, website and at, right at the top of the page you'll see a link that will take you to the free trading room and you'll just click in there and join us no password required so come on over at 8 p.m. tonight if you want to um, catch a look at that. Let's take a quick peek at some of these stocks and realizing that there are really not that many out there that are looking great here on the long side, but we do have some that have, that perked up yesterday. Take a look at um, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola holding in there pretty good and let's notice that Coke is pushing through some high resistance here in the chart and trying to stay up. When the market gets uncertain we typically see um, defensive sector stocks stiffen up and hold pretty well and um, Coke is one of those looking pretty good. Um, um, one of the members of Right Way Options um, yesterday brought this to my attention. KDP is another one of those. Um, Dr. Pepper Kerrig and you can see trying to push up here holding some bullishness and a nice little upside pattern trying to show up here in the chart. Stocks like Philip Morris looking really good holding up pretty nicely in this nice little consolidating move. Just needs that little bit of push of energy to move on through to the um, um, upside. Uh, Mondelez, Mondelez after some volatility on the sell-off, pushing back up here, holding in this nice little pattern, that possibility that Mondelez may push right on through to the upside. Stocks that I've been covering over and over, take a look at BMY. BMI made its move yesterday, breaking through that resistance. This was in the morning prep yesterday. You can see pushed on through, popped on up, and got some upside potential maybe coming here in BMY. So keep a close eye on on that. You might also want to continue to watch uh, that VMW. Now I love charts like this when the market is volatile and we see a chart that is just not. It is just grinding, pushing to the upside in a very stable clean pattern. Um, keep an eye on VMW that continues to look very very good. And you guys know I've been talking about VALE, VALE doing the same thing, not highly volatile, just moving up in a nice little pattern here in the chart. Uh, to the upside. Now one of the things we're going to have to start doing, uh, well we probably you should have been doing um, in the time, is maybe taking into account some short interest in the market. And there's a lot of patterns out there in the market for stocks that just are not looking very good overall. Take a look at Pfizer. I have mentioned Pfizer several times and I'm and there, this was a chart that was setting up in a shorting pattern. You can see this downtrending move and we're consolidating underneath that downtrend. It had earnings this morning and look what's happening here. There's your short signal. If you're not already in this short, Pfizer's not looking so good here at the moment. And if we were to break down below this price support right in here, 
um, there is a big potential move to the downside here on Pfizer. So watch carefully on charts that are failing these patterns and unfortunately failing underneath their 50-day moving average. So um, watch those carefully and there's a lot of them out there. Um, uh, Home Depot would be uh, one that is continuing to fall in that shorting pattern um, here in the chart and I think um, easily going to test the 200-day moving average and if it fails through there you can see there's a support level down here in Home Depot. If you looked at um, one of the um, uh, reports um, that I mentioned here this morning that is reporting Masco, anything in that housing sector is showing a lot of weakness. Um, you can see breaking down below its 200 day moving average, anything in the building supply area, all of those are looking very, very bearish. Um, Caterpillar tried to make a rally back here recently, but notice rallied back up toward that 50 day moving average. The 50 is already under the 200 and we're still showing some weakness here in that chart and that potential that Caterpillar could start moving on lower with the Chinese housing issues going on over there. And Caterpillar is very, very tied to the construction in China. Um, could be a major problem here if China's housing industry continues to slide. So watch some of those stocks closely and there's a lot of them right now showing those failing downtrending patterns. So you may want to have some short interest in the market. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. I want to wish you all of the best success today. Take care, stay safe and have an awesome day. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning.